Welcome to the first in a series of devlog videos looking at a prototype virtual reality first person shooter I'm working on in Unity. I am Opt Imagination and I make immersive experiences. As I'm a fanboy of the first person shooter genre, I've had a prototype project running for a little while where I can play with weapons and interactions in the virtual reality space. In this video, I'll be delving into the testing areas I've created so that I can iterate on the weapons used in this prototype, balancing them for realism versus making them fun and easy to master. Let's start with picking up one of the weapons. I use a hand posing system to blend the hand towards the grip. This hand pose then blends to grasp a weapon as it's being picked up. I find this blending of hand poses between different stages gives a good indication to the player of the various states for picking up items. Next, let's take a quick look at the two weapons in this video, the pistol and the submachine gun. I've gone for a futuristic look and feel with a polymer style physical base set of materials. As we pull the trigger, several things happen in turn. The hand's index finger blends from one position to another based on the zero to one of the controller's trigger position. Once past the set point on the trigger, the weapon is fired. A bullet is then picked from the pool of bullets set up at the start of the game and transformed into position and given a velocity. The weapon then performs a firing animation. A bullet ejection is then performed using a particle effect. Smoke effect is shown at the end of the barrel. In addition, a muzzle flash may be shown depending upon a random chance. A bullet is then removed from the count in the loaded magazine, which in turn shows a reduction in the count on the bullet indicator on the side of the weapon. A recoil curve is then used to make the weapon rise slightly, which will differ from weapon to weapon. Haptics are then also run on the player's controller. And finally, a bullet's physics system is then run depending on the bullet type. With these two types of weapons in this video, it's using a straight ray cast test. When reloading the weapon, you can collect a magazine from storage on your body. And then once you get it up to the magazine well, the system loads it into the weapon and updates the bullet count. You'll notice I immediately charge the weapon after loading and don't require the player to pull back the back of the weapon or press a button. This was a design choice to lower the steps of the player to utilize the weapons. This counts as one of those realism versus gameplay design choices. Both of the weapons in this video use a holographic sight system. It's not obvious in some of the video you see here, but this is what it looks like when you're close up. So here is weapons test area B, where I randomly show targets at different positions. This helps test movement of the weapons and how quickly a player can lock into their target and fire upon it. A different sound will play depending on whether the player kills the target by hitting the body or performing a headshot. Headshots in this game can count as an instant kill depending upon the enemy type. This is weapons test area C, where I test an extreme headshot using a zombie. I use this area to test the satisfaction of the weapon performing a kill, and also to test that the hit system is working correctly, depending upon hitting the body or the head. This is weapons test area D, where I test AI enemies coming at you. As with test area B, this helps iterate on moving the weapon and locking in on targets. In this case, moving targets that happen to be shooting at you. Here is some video of the same AI coming at you, but in the game itself. In this scenario, the AI won't fire on you unless you happen to be armed.
For now though, that's all we're going to go over for these weapons test areas. If anything stands out that you'd be interested in learning more about, let me know in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.